Here we're going to be applying uh, the efficiency tool to our flyback converter with realistic components so that we can measure the efficiency of the input power to the output power. So first what I'm going to do though is actually change this gate driving setup to have a more realistic gate driver. So you can see over here we're just using this uh, waveform, but let's change that. So we're going to take this part out. We're just going to move this over here and we can actually disable this so that it's on the schematic, but then we just won't use it. So that doesn't have to process anything in the simulation. But now we want to actually drive this MOSFET or GANFET. So we need to place a driver. So I think if you're not sure where it is, you can just search it in this way, put in driver. You see there's a few different ones. Uh, there's some obsolete parts that are a little bit more ideal. We're going to use this multi-level MOSFET driver. All right, so it's set up like this, and this is actually the midpoint's going to drive this directly here. And then we're going to put these to ground here and here. So I'm going to add the grounds there. We're going to need some voltage that's going to actually power the driver. So we're going to need to add another source, voltage source. So we're going to copy this one and paste it over here. And we're also going to add this ground. But we're going to change this to the driving voltage. I looked it up in the data sheet and for the EPC parts, they actually recommend six volts. So five can work, but six is going to be more optimal. It has a little, little bit lower ES, uh, RDS on for your component. So we're going to use six as our driving voltage. And we want to connect here. We could draw a line, a wire, but it's going to make it kind of messy. So we're going to use a connector instead. So I'm going to move this up so I can place a connector and it's a terminal. You can also just press Y. So we're going to put the terminal here. I'm going to rotate it five vertically here. Move this one over. And I'm going to name this the drive, just so we know what it is. Then we can copy this one, select it here. And then these two points are connected. All right. So now we need the signal, the PWM signal that goes into the driver. Uh, before we do that, let's check the specs here. So we can do more advanced levels. I'm actually just going to stick with uh, level zero. So the simplified version, we just assume that there is some resistance for the two switches, but that's it. And then our input parameters, so the PWM signal coming through in here, we're going to do 0 to 5 volts, so a threshold of 2.5 is going to be fine for that. And you can add a delay if you want. We'll just leave this delay in there as an example. Okay, so here is our driver. Now we need to drive this with a PWM signal. We could again use this signal over here if we want, but we're going to try to implement it like we do with analog signals. So we're going to do a sawtooth wave here. So we're going to place, well, first let's do the comparator. So we're going to need a comparator. I'm going to use this one and I'm just going to flip it around so that we're going to connect it up here. So this is the output and we're going to wire this to here. So this is the output of that's going to compare the sawtooth waveform and a constant value. And that's going to create our PWM and then that's going to go into here. So a little bit more realistic. And let's just add some grounds here. So the bottom here should be connected to the ground. And these two need to be our, what we're comparing. So we're going to put the sawtooth here. We can place our voltage waveform generator. And we'll just add the ground here. And now I want to do a sawtooth. So sawtooth is one of the default ones. So it's pretty easy to implement. Our frequency is 100 kilohertz, so we'll press tab, that updates everything. And our initial position is zero, that's fine, but we want to go up to five. Press tab, it's going to automatically update those other things. So press OK. Now we need it something to compare to, so a voltage. So we're going to copy this voltage source again, but this is just going to be used for logic. 
so we can connect here to here. And one question is what value do we put in here? Since we're doing 0 to 5, we would want to go approximately in the middle. So let's just do 50%, so I'll do 2.5. And then we should be ready to run. The pop trigger is still on the gate. So assuming this circuit is working, then we should get a regular signal here and everything should be good. So let's test it and see what we get. And we're going to take a risk and just go straight to pop. So we're not going to do transit this time. Let's see. Luckily, it did go. So we can see that our output is working here just as it did before. And we can see that our gate out here is also looking good. If we wanted to change this to maybe a lower percentage, we can do that. So if we wanted to do 10%, it would be approximately 0 0.5. So let's just double check that this is working. Okay, so we expect that our value is going to go a little bit um, lower. So run schematic. And we can see, yes, indeed, it is a much smaller um, part. And you can actually see it going into DCM here with this resonance happening. So that's a good sign. Looks like things are good and uh, it's working. But let's go back to actually the mode that we wanted to be in. And actually the previous one we are about 50%, but let's go, we might have to go a little bit higher than that to get to the point that we want. So let's go, um, it was 2.51 maybe? Let's see what happens there. So let's uh, run the schematic again. And look at our output voltage, a little bit still under 30. Let's try to just get it up to 30 so that we can get approximately what we want. Ah, I also forgot to mention, we can measure this value. So if we want the average output voltage, we can select VO. And we can press over here the average. Click that once. And it will give you the value. So we're a little bit under 30. Let's see if this new value will do a little better. And luckily it will update it automatically. So it, that increased value updated a little bit. That's great. That's good enough for now. So with this circuit, let's look at the power. Right, so here's our full circuit. Pop is working. You do need pop to be working before you run the efficiency analysis because it assumes steady state and then does a calculation. Okay. So once you've gotten that to work, now we can go to the efficiency. The next thing we can do, we need to add power probe. So it kind of lays it out here, add power probes to the schematic. And again, it has a lot of description. What we're going to do is add the power probes to our input and our output, just like we would in the lab. So here's going to be one. So we're going to place one at the input power. So I'm going to mirror this around F6 and place it here. It does have to touch the node of the input uh, source uh, in order to calculate it. And then we're also going to put one over here at the load, our power, our resistive load. And right now I'm just going to do those two. So that's our input output. We think of our normal power stage. So let's just rename these so it's really clear. So we're going to put this P in. And this one's going to be P out. Let's run that one. Oh, actually, sorry, let's do this part. We're going to define the input and output probes. So this explains it as well. We just have to pretty much say, clearly tell the, the calculator which one is the input, which one is the output. So I'm going to take P in and put it here. And then this P out and put it here. So input and output. And this one's pretty straightforward. So we just press OK believe we need to run it real quick. Run it first. All right, so we did have a minor error, and this is because we are now using kind of absolute probes, and I think we need a ground here. So let's double check. I know it's not, it's not gonna be isolated anymore, but for calculation, we may need this ground. So let's try to run this one more time. Okay, yeah, so we needed this ground here because I think the voltage calculation over this resistor was having some trouble. So once we added this ground here, 
we got rid of some of the errors that we had previously. So that looks better now. And actually you can see the P out is a new graph over here. And you may see that one, if we look at the mean values down here, one is positive, the P out, so that's from the resistor, but one is negative, right? And that's just the, the way it turns out, even if you move this probe to the bottom, I, I think it still comes out the same. So don't worry, the calculator understands that there's no negative power uh, as a source or a load here, so it will automatically figure this out. All right, so if we want to then just get the powers, and actually it even shows you on the display here, you can see that. And now we can just calculate, click back over here, we can calculate the efficiency and it just kind of spits out the answer here. So you can see the input power, output power, and your efficiency in that operating mode. And it doesn't say, for example, where the losses are in each component. You can do further analysis to try to figure that part out, but this is just gonna give you the basic input to output efficiency. All right, so it also shows it over here, so you have a little log of it. But let's see, There's this only is for your power stage. Next, we want to also take into account the driver losses. So we need to place another probe here. So we can add power probes to the schematic and we're just gonna put it over here. So this is because I put these two close together, I get a little bit confused. So um, let's move this down and move this connector up. So there's a little bit of space in between. And then we're gonna place the probe on the right here. So that should not be a problem. And we should name it. So it should be P drive driver. All right, and then we can go into the define the inputs and outputs. We already defined these previously, so we're just gonna add this P driver. We want this to count as an input power. So we're gonna change that. We need to run the schematic. All right, looks good. And we get all of our output powers here. We see our mean power is actually pretty low, so that's what we expect. It shouldn't be extremely high. And then we can just Go back here, press tools, and calculate the efficiency. And so then it gives you a breakdown of that. So before we had a little bit higher efficiency, uh, but adding the driver is a little bit less. Of course, if you had, we're driving many switches or maybe switching more often, that will be a higher value here. So it just is a way for you to calculate and estimate your losses with a realistic schematic. All right, so this is how you use this tool and you can set up the probes to do that. And so even if you change your operating point, so let's change this to, um, let's go back to the, just a one volt here maybe. All right, so if we change this to one volt and let's uh, run that again on schematic. So you can see it definitely has changed its waveforms. So we can see that's different. Let's just run the efficiency again. Calculate efficiency. All right, and now you can see that we have a different efficiency here. So it is lower efficiency because you can see the plots, it keeps the data out here. So compared to 96, we are 91% efficient. So that is um, one way that you can calculate your losses from power stage and the driver. If you have more sources of power, for example, if you have some logic and you're powering it from another power supply, different voltage rails, you just keep putting the power onto those voltage sources, make sure it's defined as input, and then you can do the efficiency as well. The same is true if you had multiple outputs, so you had two different voltages as your output rails, you could define two outputs and it will simply aggregate the power and divide to calculate your efficiency.